plows on through the storm. Yes, it does. I have found a joy that jumps over sadness. I have found a love that lights up every room. Yes, it does. Sing it with me. 
come down. Come down, come down, oh Lord. Come visit your children one more time. Come down, come down, oh Lord. Oh, more. We must have more of you. Come down. in my life, in my tomorrows. Yeah, Father, we thank you. Wow, that there's always more. So have another drink, everyone. Wow, you ready for more? More. <laughs> wow, more. Oh, Daddy, you're so good. Father, I thank you for everything you've done already. Thank you for what you're going to do this afternoon and tonight and tomorrow night. <laughs> wow. Oh. Wow. Well, Becky and I have a testimony of the faithfulness and the favor and the goodness of God. <laughs> We've become acquainted with the Canadian Border Services folks. <laughs> the presence of God was in their office this afternoon because we carry his presence with us, right? So we just were able to um, just go in and uh, Becky was able to give them a piece of paper that they liked and we were in and out of there and we did a little bit of a tour around the whole airport grounds. It's a lot bigger than I thought. <laughs> we dropped her off at Terminal 3. She went in and was right out. So it took us a little bit of time, but it was a learning experience. And the good news is for those of you that have been asking, we will have Becky's product um, in the bookstore, hopefully for tonight, um, it may be by 5 o'clock, but it may not be till just before the evening session. So be sure to check for that, and we'll tell you more about that later. You may find out um, some more from Becky uh, if you're in her workshop. I want to give you um, 
one more announcement, and that is tomorrow morning there's an opportunity, I guess they've talked about it a lot, to um, have breakfast with Steve Long, our senior pastor. Um, and just hear his heart, it's $7 uh, for breakfast, and you do need to sign up for that um, actually before you go to your workshop. So we're going to meet the workshop speakers, and then if you want to do the breakfast, if you would just scoot out into the foyer and just quickly sign up for that, and uh, then go on your way to your workshop, that'd be great. So we can get our our cooks and cafe folks geared up and they'll have their numbers. So I'd like to invite up our workshop speakers. We have Becky Fisher today, and we have our amazing preschool coordinator here at TACF, a lady who I love very much. We share the same office space, Ann Reed. Come on up, ladies. <laughs> so I'm gonna have, um, and Jeremy, there you are. Come on up, Jeremy. We're going to just have uh, workshops this afternoon, starting in a few minutes. So I'd just like you to tell us a little bit about your workshop. Go ahead, Jeremy. <laughs> um, Mike workshop, workshop. Won't be a workshop, really. <laughs> workshop, indeed. No work. <laughs> We're going to have a, a, Lord willing, a soaking session right here. All right, so um, that, actually, what we'll do is we'll have a short teaching on what soaking is, because I, I see the look on some people's faces. And so we'll, we'll explain. Basically, it's, it's called active rest. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, you can talk to children and ask what they do when they rest. And they'll tell you. It's really clear. Nothing. Okay? That's what we're going to do. That's our workshop. Nothing. And, and some people really look forward because afternoons are really good for this kind of workshop. <laughs> and, and for those of you that just want just a great place to fall asleep, I'm telling you this is the place to go. And some of you may, may need a nap this afternoon. You know, that's one of the best things kids ever invented, afternoon naps. I think they're great. Well, this could be one of those times. Now, that's the rest part. The active part is we choose and invite the Lord to come and dig around the garden of our hearts. And we invite him to speak to us and just yeah. share things with us. And I'm, I'm absolutely amazed. He's, he's very good at running his own church. Did mm -hmm. you know that? Amen. He's really good. And, and he's able to do stuff, accomplish stuff that hours of counseling and, and encouragement and all the rest of it could never do. And so this is one of the rare times we actually say to God, come and do what you want to do, and we're going to give you space to do it. We're going to give you hours to do it. Not too shabby. So that's what the workshop is about for, for, for here. Yeah, you know, we affectionately, it's been coined as soaking for a long time here at TACF, you know. And when we teach the kids about it, we use the old dry sponge, and then we, you know, we spray a little bit of water on it and tell them that's kind of, you know, when you just get touched by God. But God wants us to soak, and we put the whole sponge in the water, you know. Take it out of the bucket, and then we throw it on the kids. And they get the whole idea that sponge is nice and soft and squeezable, and that's what soaking's about. Daphne and I also like to call it affectionately sloking. So it's sleep, SL from sleep, sloking, or soaking, your choice. <laughs> okay, Anne, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're gonna be doing. Your workshop is called? In the River with Under Fives. And um, I've been blessed to be a part of what God has been doing here since 1994, and I've learned a lot about being in the river. Um, but now my responsibility is to translate that into an experience in the nursery, the twos and threes, and the fours and fives. If you come to my workshop this afternoon, I'm going to share with you uh, my journey about how I got invited in there and what the Lord has shown me and what we're doing right now to um, impart the life of God into the children. Um, we're also going to uh, do it in a creative way. Um, I work with children. I like to have centers. I like to have paint and glue. And so that there's going to be a little bit of, um, you know, instruction. There's going to be some testimony. I'm going to share some prophecies with you. And uh, we're also going to have an opportunity to, uh, to get active. All right. Okay, my workshop will be for those who are ministering to any age group, whether it's uh, the preschool or all the way up to adult. 
but per particularly the kids between 6 and 12, what do we need to be doing differently? I expressed last night that there's a need out there, an urgency in the spirit to do something different than we've done before. And many of you caught the vision. You've heard what, you've, what we've talked about, but you think in your mind, well, how do you actually practically begin to do that? And we now are serving a generation that is no longer content to sit in the pews and listen to us talk. They want to get up and be a part of what God is doing. So how do you do that? What that basically is called is equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. How do you equip children for the work of the ministry? If you want to know what the work of the ministry is, you look in Matthew 25 or you look, or excuse me, um, what's the last chapter of Matthew? I've already forgotten, but Mark 16, where it talks about go ye into all the world and they that believe will. And that's the list of the believer's ministry. And so what we do with children is we teach them how to become a part of the believer's ministry while they're still children. So if you want to hear uh, about that, then that's what my workshop will be on. That's great. Thanks, Becky. So I know we probably all want to go to all of them. It's usually the challenge is, which one should I go to? The good news is uh, we'll be audio recording. Um, not sure about the soaking, but Anne and Becky's workshop. So <laughs> soaking, well... You could probably get it on Revive TV right now. <laughs> um, so just ask the Lord where you need to be, and I'm going to send you off there. But Anne mentioned something I just want to tell you about. Our intern, Joe, has put together something for us. It was really on Anne's heart, was just to um, look at some of the prophetic words that God has given over the last, I'm probably seven, eight, 10 years about children. Actually, some of this was put together by Becky a few years ago, and we've gathered a few others. And so Joe has put together a great PowerPoint presentation for us. So when you were, you're coming in, or when you're going on breaks, um, you'll see those slides up on the, um, the two screens. And it's really um, faith building, just to see what the Lord has spoken through, you know, prophetic voices like Cindy Jacobs and Bill Hammond, and just all kinds of prophetic people that you recognize their names and just but what his heart is for this generation of kids so we just have a little um we just want to sort of highlight that and thanks joe for the great job on that i love it great photography i don't know where she went but okay so there's a river and uh get in the river and soaking will be in this uh in this room here in the auditorium in what we call overflow three to this side down that hallway will be becky's workshop and I'll just release you to go there in a second. And Anne's will be down this hallway in Overflow 1. So just remember, if you want to go to the breakfast, go ahead and sign up quickly, and then go, go on into your workshops, and they'll start up in about five minutes.
Well, blessings to you. I can't believe you're not going to Becky's. Can't believe. Anyway, good, good that you're here. Um, we're going to spend the next two hours, as I mentioned, not doing a whole lot, but inviting the Holy Spirit to come. And it's one of those things where we, we're actually trying to do what Mary did. Do you remember the story of Mary and Martha? Jesus comes to visit, and Martha, just like you and me, is very concerned that the house is clean and that there's food for these lovely guests that are there. And so she's very busy, and Jesus arrives with 12 others, by the way, and uh, sits comfortably in the living room. But Mary stays there. Now, you understand, Martha and Mary have this understanding. When they're guests, everybody helps, especially when there are lots of guests. And, of course, Martha's very upset that her sister is not helping anymore. She's actually in that living room doing nothing. Now, that's the issue. She's doing nothing. Nothing constructive, nothing helpful, nothing practical in the sense of the needs that Martha has. And ultimately, Martha appeals to Jesus and says, tell her to help me. And, and Jesus' answer was fabulous because it changed everything about what we call performance. Martha, Martha, you're worried about so many things, but Mary has chosen the best part. And it will not be taken away from her. The best part was doing nothing? Help me with this. What was Mary doing? She was just listening to Jesus. I think she was falling in love. That's where we want to be. In a place just every now and again where we can fall in love. Um, I could never persuade you to stop being a Martha. Anybody here got a to-do list at home? We all do. We all do. Have you ever noticed the to-do list never really gets done? It just kind of moves around. It changes. There's always stuff to do. There's always a need to be a Martha. What I am saying is occasionally it's just really good to be a Mary. In terms of the world, this is stupid. To sit or lie down and do nothing when you could be constructively doing something, especially for the kingdom. I mean, that thing that Jesus said, this, what Mary was doing was the best part. You mean better than getting a meal, better than evangelism, better than missions? What, what did he mean? Well, that process of falling in love, once we fall in love and continue to grow in falling in love, means that we go out and evangelize and do kingdom stuff and do missions and work with children and all the rest of it with a heart that's right. That's the thing. Our hearts need to be in a place where we're continually falling in love. So I bless the Martha in you, the stuff that the world sees is really good, but I also really bless the Mary in you that Jesus says is really good. You know, most of us think that we soak because we benefit, and we do, but that's pr not primarily the reason we soak. The primary reason we soak is because apparently Jesus likes it. He liked it when Mary just sat at his feet and accomplished Nothing in the eyes of the world, but was just with him. Isn't that unbelievable? God loves it when we're just with him. Um, some of you might be wondering, too, what, <clears throat> what about kids and soaking? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we found it's, it's wonderful to teach the kids how to soak as well. Um, we were at a church, a church in England where at the end of every church service, when they were finished, um, they would spend 15 minutes of soaking together in families before they went home. It was amazing. They would, all the kids would come running in, find mom and dad, and they'd find their comfortable spot on the floor and get their pillows and blankets or whatever. And you know, the parents would be lying there with their kids beside them, and they're all soaking together. As they're learning how to hear God's voice, Becky was talking about teaching kids how to hear God's voice, they can hear it better than we can. You know, they, they don't have all the things in the way that we have, all the distractions, and um, they just, they hear him so much easier. So we teach them at an early age and then have them, you know, soak, spend time in God's presence just listening to what he's saying to them. But they do it best if we do it with them. You know, they've got a shorter attention span, we know, so often they can't stay down for a long period of time, but, um, but they certainly can do it, and we encourage them. Um, many times our families... At home, we'll do it. 
you know, just again gather up their kids and lie down as a family on the floor or whatever and just spend time soaking in God's presence and listening to his voice. As Jeremy said, you know, one reason is just to come and just be with God, just to spend that time getting to know him, getting to love him more. Um, and there are side benefits that come along as the fruit of it. And that is things like kids say, oh, mommy's so much more patient with me when she soaks. <laughs> They'll say, you know, we just get changed in the presence of God, don't we? When we spend time with Him, we're more patient, more loving, more kind. All the fruit of the Spirit that happens because we've just spent time in His presence. And so if you're finding you're getting impatient or finding it hard to have grace for people, that's a time for you to soak. Spend time just drawing from God everything that you need. He says that His grace is sufficient for absolutely everything that we could possibly need. And then there are a lot of verses that talk about the kind of things God wants to pour in by the power of the Holy Spirit. For instance, uh, Romans 15, 13, it says, Now may the God of hope fill you all with joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. It means we don't have to hope harder, try harder to do that. But instead, you just say, Lord, I don't have much hope. I'm feeling a little hopeless right now. I come and I draw and I drink from you what I need. Because he said we are, would abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit within us, not by our own, our own efforts. There are many scriptures where he talks about he would pour in love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit again. And another one, Colossians 1.11, that just says that um, he would give us patience and great endurance. Anybody need patience? You know, you have to work with kids, don't you? <laughs> you got your own kids too. And, you know, sometimes we don't have the patience we need. But again, as we just spend time in God's presence, drawing that patience we need, and long endurance for the, the things that keep going on or the hardships that we're going through, he promises that it's by his strength and his power deep in our innermost being. It's something that he gives us. And so soaking is one of those times where we're just drawing in and drinking from him. I mean, we, we want to learn how to do that all day long, right? Just little five-minute soaks instead of a coffee break going for a Holy Spirit break, you know? Just, just spend time in his presence, drawing from him what we need, the resources we need for living. And so it's a time to draw that from him and uh, just tell him we need him. We need him to supply the strength and everything that, that we need. He promised it. It's a time when we want to realize that as soon as we say we come into God's presence, he is already right there. He just keeps saying, come. Scripture's full of verses saying, come. Are you thirsty? He says, come to the living waters. You know, come into my courts with praise. Come, come. The invitation is out over and over again just to come. James 4 verse 8 says that if I draw near to him, he will draw near to me, right? That's a promise he makes. So as soon as we come, as soon as we step into his presence, we know he's already right there. Whether we feel him or not, sometimes we feel his presence, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we'll hear his voice and so and sometimes we won't. Sometimes it's just being with him. Well, when you love someone, it's sometimes nice just to be with them. You don't have to say much, just, ah, just being there is wonderful. Some of you I know have come and you're weary. You know, life is, gets busy. And maybe you've come even for some direction from God and you're trying to hear what he has to say for direction. Um, whatever it is you need, just ask him and he'll fulfill that. Uh, I know that with, with um, kids, we're learning more and more actually in everything in ministry. We're learning to listen to God's voice so that we can do what the Father did, just like Jesus did, right? And with the kids in kids' ministry, it's like, for each child, saying, Lord, what are you saying to me about this child? Give me your heart for them. What do you want to say? What do you want to speak? What do you want to do? And we're learning how to hear what God wants to have happen. He says to, the way we're supposed to pray is his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Whatever it is he wants and his desire is for those kids, it's like we go and ask the Lord, what do you want? We hear it from heaven and we bring it down to earth. When we speak destiny over kids' lives, because that's what, one thing we do, that's what the prophetic does often, is just speaking prophetic and speaking in what God's heart is for them. So first you go in times of soaking. You know, if you're preparing your Sunday school lesson, just go and spend time with God and say, God, what do you want to say to these kids today? What about little so-and-so? He's been really troubled lately. What is it you want for him? And the Lord will give you strategies. The Lord will give you his heart for them. 
And also the Lord will show you the destiny, the calling he has over that child. And then you can cooperate with God and help to bring it down to earth. And you speak it over his life. You know, sometimes there's kids. I remember one kid I had. Oh, he was, he had too much energy as far as I was concerned. And, you know, he was just always, you know, so active and into everything and into every problem. And it's like, he just, he needed a lot of direction. Now he's one of our staff over here in the school of ministry. And I look at him all the time. I say, oh, you used to be one of my Sunday school kids. And I think, wow, God, look what you've done. And I realize, again, what God was saying is, sometimes you look at kids and they're troubled, you know, little troublemakers or something, hard to manage, you know, too much energy and stuff. And he's saying, no, I want to show you what I've got for that child. I want you to speak it over their lives, call it into being. You say, look, I just see it's such a wonderful pastoral call over your life, you know. You have such an ability to influence kids. You know, and those that are around you. And God wants to use that in your life to influence them for God. And just, but be able to speak God's destiny over them. But it comes often by soaking and listening ahead of time to what God's saying for that child. And the best way to intercede is doing exactly that. It's not saying, oh, God, please sort this kid out. Please do this. Please do that. That's, that's not playing, praying in faith anyway, is it? But saying, God, what do you want to do for this one? And then you agree with God and you just call it into being. So we want to just come into God's presence and we want to just come and say, Lord, what do you want to do today? Not just come with our own agenda. If you've got an agenda, I suggest writing it down on a piece of paper, putting it aside. If you've got questions for God, because often we do, just write it on your piece of paper, put it beside you um, on that piece of paper and that pen. First of all, just spend time with God just for who he is. Right? As... As intercessors or as kids' ministry people, often our focus is on them and on that, whatever it is that we feel called to. But he's saying, first and foremost, come to him. Everything comes out of a place with, of intimacy with him. The rest is a byproduct. So if we come first of all, and if you come today to say, Lord, I'm just going to spend time with you just for you, just to love up on you and just to receive love from you, just to be with you. And then, Lord, in that place, what do you want from me today? What do you want to speak to me about? What do you want to show me? And you'll find just in that time of spending time with him, all of a sudden thoughts will pop into your head when you weren't even thinking about it. You think, wow, that must have been God because I wasn't even thinking about that. And God just pops thoughts into your mind that will answer some of those questions you have. Then he'll show you, give you a revelation of different things he wants to give to you right now. But it's best to let God have his agenda today, right? I, I just had a sense when I was listening, again, because we learned to listen, just pause and listen to say, God, what is your heart for these people? And I felt him say, oh, last night and today, I just felt some, some of you are very weary you know, and tired from doing good things. And maybe that's the reason that you chose the soaking. It's like, God, I just need to be. Not do, but I need to be. And I just need to come to you and just be in your presence. And I think the Lord wants to pour in refreshing for you today. He energizes you as you spend time in his presence. Colossians 1.29, it says, To this end I labor, struggling with all his energy that so powerfully works in me. I love that verse because I lack energy sometimes to do what he's asked me to do. But if I learn how to step into that place of peace and rest in his presence, I find he energizes me. That flow of the Holy Spirit starts happening in me. And then I find I've just got great joy. I've got fun happening. I just, and I'm energized in his presence. And after being in his presence, I find that I have way more of his spirit within me, way more fruitfulness, way more productiveness in everything that I do because I've taken that time, first of all, just to be with him. And maybe I think, well, I don't have time to do that in my day. Well, the busier you are, the more you need to do it. Just because, again, as you spend time with him, you'll find everything else will happen so much quicker, so much more efficiently, a lot more God appointments, all those things, because you spent time in his presence. It's just you, you get to the point where you just realize how vital it is to spend time with him in order to accomplish all the things that he's asked us to do. So we invite you when you lie down, you can lie down on, the, on these chairs. They're nice and soft across there or, or on the floor. I know I saw a couple of big pillows coming in from the children's ministry. Ah, over there. If you're one of the first ones to grab it. 
I encourage you to take pen and paper, maybe your Bible. The Lord might bring some scriptures to mind that he wants you to look up as he's speaking to you. Um, I said, write your questions down. Ask him even just how much do you love me? And let him speak that into your heart. Because just we're like little kids. We need to hear it every day. And let him speak those things into your life. Um, he said, just all the things that you need, just express it to the Lord. Lord, I really need joy in my life right now. Lord, I need hope. I need patience. I need a healing. I need financial miracle. Whatever it is you need, give it to him. Make your request made known to him on that paper. And then just forget it and just spend time with him and just see what he does. And uh, you can get up whenever you want. I encourage you that sometimes, you know, you feel like you, you're hearing from him, you're getting things from him, but then you feel like it's, the spirit kind of lifts off of you. That might be when you want to sit up and write things down or ask him more questions on your paper or read a scripture or something. I encourage you to lie back down again because his presence com sometimes comes like in waves. You know, and then when you lie down again to soak, you'll find you, you, you won't just start from where, the beginning again, but you'll, it's like where you left off. All of a sudden, hoil, you just go in deeper with him, and you'll get even more wonderful stuff. It's some, it usually takes 10 to 15 minutes to start getting anything, but that's okay. Just spend that time just saying, Lord, I just come to be with you. I just give you my time because I love you. And just come and be in his presence. Um, Luke 11, verses 11 to 13, to me, is one of the key verses that talk about, our, you know, what happens when we soak as far as it says, if you ask your father for, for a fish, or another gospel that says bread, what's he going to give you? Can you tell me? Fish and bread. Yeah. Not a, a snake or a scorpion, it says, right? And... Then verse, it keeps going and saying in verse 13 of Luke 11, it's talking about the Holy Spirit. That's what the whole passage is all about. So if you ask your father for the Holy Spirit, what are you going to get? The Holy Spirit. Well, what if you don't feel anything? What did you get? Still got the Holy Spirit, right? What if you don't hear anything? What did you get? The Holy Spirit. If you ask him for the Holy Spirit, that's what he's going to pour into, and you will start seeing all of the fruit of the Spirit in your life more and more all the time. You will start to hear more. You will start to see more. He'll give you pictures. He'll give you words. He'll give you visions. Um, those will happen as you soak, and you'll find you'll have some amazing experiences with him when you do that. You might need to press through for a while until you start to really hear, because as we practice hearing God's voice, then we get to hear better. As you practice seeing in the Spirit, you'll start to see better. And God will speak to you in those pictures and in those words and the things that he gives you. And you'll be amazed at what you receive from him. So just keep pressing in, and he promises he will give you more of his Holy Spirit, more of what he's got for you. So just I encourage you to, to lie down. there. I don't know if there are any ministry team around. Sometimes they come around and they might lay hand on... Yeah? Okay, we've got a couple. If you feel a hand on your shoulder or on your head or something, it's just a ministry team person just saying, God, whatever it is you're doing right now, I bless it. Just go for it. Give them some more, Lord. And just, we're just, we're going to be singing over you, maybe read a couple of scriptures over you, playing over you. Zephaniah 3.17 says that God rejoices in you and delights over you with singing. So God sings. And we believe God wants to sing over you. He wants to tell you how delighted he is in you. He's rejoicing over you. He wants to minister to you. I believe angels are going to be released to be ministering to you as you lie down and soak as well. And so we're just inviting the Holy Spirit to come and do whatever he wants to do. So just come and spend that time just to be with him, will you? Okay, you got your pen and paper in your Bible? You can, your coats are great if you roll them up and put them behind your head, you know, support your neck and... You know, cover you if you're getting cold on the floor. And uh, so just find those cushions if you want. But just spend time and just give God that time and see what he wants to do. I'm sure there'll be amazing stories afterwards of what God's done or what he's told you or shown you.
I'd brought my pillow The great big fluffy one from home The next time I come and soak here I'm gonna bring my blanket to Father, we just invite you to come soak us in your love. We want to sit at your feet and just listen to you. Just be in your presence with no agenda at all. We give you permission to do whatever you want to do, to speak whatever you want to speak into our lives.
forsake you because he loves you oh yes he loves you don't you know that he loves you shall not be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Soften my heart, Lord, 
consume me with your holy Soften my heart, Lord. I have made a choice. Soften my heart, Lord. I want to hear your voice, for your presence is beyond anything I could desire. Soften my heart, Lord. Consume me with your holy Soften my heart, Lord, consume me with your holy
is he who will devote himself to be close to me, declares the Lord. For I will draw near to him, and he will draw close to me. Always be drawn into your 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path.
If you will ask me for my heart I'll say yes Oh yes to you If you will ask me for my life I'll say Ask me for it all. I say yes. Oh, I say yes to you, Lord. I say.
because you are precious and honored in my sight. And because I love you, do not be afraid, for I am with you. be with you. I will never leave you. I will be with you. I will be a hiding place. I will be with you. I will not abandon Let's you go. 
shelter of the most high will rest in the shadow of the almighty he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will rest in the shadow of the almighty be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, declares the Lord Almighty. see me through your eyes so that I can realize your great love for me. Teach me, oh Lord, that I am precious in your sight, that as a father loves his child.
show me, dear Lord, that I can never earn your love, that a gift cannot be earned, only given. Teach me, O oh Lord, that your love will never fade. I 
found peace in your arms. Come hold me close, for I have come to depend on you alone. Father God, I have stilled and quieted my soul. child I lay my head upon your breast for you are all that I've been longing for pure as love deep as rest for have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You understand my thoughts from afar. You're intimately acquainted with all of my ways. 
for there's not a word on my tongue, but you, O oh Lord, already know it. You've set me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful, too high. I cannot understand it all.
king shall be a crown of splendor in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. For as a young man marries a maiden, so will your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. Just one glance of your eyes. Oh, you have stolen my heart at just the mention of your name. Oh, how my heart. Your fragrance is so sweet. 
So faithful, mindful of us, my provider, my redeemer, so faithful are you.
Silence draws me into you, my Lord, to you, my Lord. And with my praises comes the presence of your Son drawing me along, closer to you. Sweet. 
whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. And we who with unveiled faces reflect the Lord's glory. We're changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord.
It's almost 4.30. Now you're welcome to stay and soak as long as you like. <laughs>